Hey guys, so this is a video about amines. Amines are those organic compounds that contain nitrogen in which it seems that one or more of the hydrogen atoms found in ammonia are replaced by alkyl groups. Now, what I mean by that is, imagine that you have ammonia, NH3. Ammonia has a lone pair of nitrogen and got three hydrogens. So you can replace one or all three hydrogens with alkyl groups. Here, for example, this hydrogen is replaced by this alkyl group and this one is replaced by this alkyl group. This is ammonia and this is an amine functional group. Now, it doesn't have to be normal alkyl groups. You can also replace them with uh, a benzene ring. So here you got three hydrogens. One of them hydrogens is replaced by a benzene ring. But what is consistently common between ammonia and these guys, amines, is that there is a nitrogen with a lone pair and three single bonds. That's very important to realize. So what we saw was nitrogen with a lone pair having three single bonds. This is ammonia, this is an amine, and this is another amine. This one is called a dimethyl amine, because two methyl groups on an amine. This one is called a phenyl amine. Now we look at the classifications and scrolling down. Now you can also have uh, what we call primary, ter secondary, and tertiary amines. So primary, secondary, and tertiary. The difference between the primary, secondary, and tertiary amine, you can guess is that the primary amine may, one of the hydrogens on uh, is replaced by an alkyl group. In secondary, two of the hydrogens are replaced by an alkyl group. In tertiary, all three are replaced by an alkyl group. Again, the point of reference is ammonia, because ammonia has a nitrogen with a lone pair, and has three hydrogens. This would be an inorganic compound, and these are organic amines. This is ammonia. These are amines. A primary amine, a secondary amine, and a tertiary amine. This would be called methyl amine. This would be called dimethyl amine. This would be called trimethyl amine. But as long as it has nitrogen and a lone pair, that's what makes it an amine. That's why in biology, we even call this a nitrogenous base. Because, by the way, this lone pair is what makes it a base. We'll be looking at that in the next minute. But what you can understand is that, please, for what you can really want to remember is that amines are the organic chemistry's ammonia. They are chemically equivalent to ammonia in most cases. So what ammonia does, these guys do too. There is a slight variation, obviously, but they are the ammonia of the organic chemistry world. Keep that in mind. Let me show you some more examples. So this is an example of a primary amine, ethyl amine. This is a branched phenyl amine. This is a cyclo amine, but they're all primary amines. And why? Because out of the NH3, only one of them is replaced by an alkyl group. So you'll see primary amines will have the group NH2. Secondary will have two of the HS replaced by alkyl group. So they'll have the group NH. You see that NH, NH, NH. So if you see an NH and the carbon has the nitrogen has two other bonds, that would be secondary. And if you see just N with carbon having three other bonds, that would be a tertiary amine. We saw that earlier here's an example. Nicotine is an example of a tertiary amine because here nitrogen has three of these bonds. Meaning, always, always have three bonds, but if the three of, of all three bonds are alkyl groups, that would be a tertiary amine. Here, two of them are alkyl groups and one of them is a hydrogen, so secondary amine. Now, outside of their classification, we don't want to worry too much about the differences between primary, secondary, and name, uh, tertiary amines. We'll get to the right to the meat of the chapter, which is the first important property of amines. Because I told you guys to treat them like ammonia, and ammonia is what we call a base. And why is ammonia a base? Because ammonia reacts with water to ionize in water. And you might, you might remember, ammonia forms some ammonium ions and the water leaves behind hydroxide ions. But to prove ammonia as a base, I don't react with water, I react with an acid like HCl. Because what happens is 
the ammonia becomes NH4 plus and this HCl becomes Cl minus. It makes a salt. In a sense that if I use the bronzer lowry acid base theory, here ammonia was a base and accepted a proton. It accepts H plus, which is your proton. So ammonia is a proton acceptor and HCl is a proton donor. It makes salt and water. Now, amines do the exact same thing. Exact same like this reaction. So if one of the reactions was basically, uh, what you want to call it? C, let's say CH3 and H2. Now this is a base. And if I react this with water, what, uh, sorry, with HCl, what happens is that it's a base. It has this lone pair and that lone pair, just like a nitro a nitrogen and ammonia, the lone pair accepts the H plus, becomes an H4 plus. Here, the lone pair accepts the H plus and become NH3 plus. Why not 4? Because one of the H's has been bonded to and replaced, sorry, one of the H's has been replaced by this methyl group. So the methyl stays intact. The NH2 ka lone pair becomes NH3 plus and the Cl becomes Cl minus. And therefore, in this case, this was acting as a base because that's also a proton donor, proton acceptor, sorry. And why? are both ammonia and amines accepting a proton. A proton is an H plus ion. Well, we've done this in AS theory already. The reason why ammonia accepts a proton is because ammonia has a lone pair and that lone pair forms dative bonds with the H plus ion. So here I'm gonna show you that. This is on the top is the ammonia molecule NH3 bonding to an H plus. This is the H plus coming from HCl. And that H plus and this lone pair makes a dative bond right there. Just like that, if you had the EH replaced by an al any alkyl group like CH3, that would just be CH3 and H2 with the N having its lone pair still. Just like ammonia, that lone pair exists and that lone pair will make a dative bond with H plus ions. So ammonia can make an ammonium ion and amine can also make an anion, a cation, sorry, by accepting protons. So both of these are proton acceptors. If they are proton acceptors, we treat them as what? basis that's very important so the first property you really really need to know about amines is that all of them are going to be bases primary hogya secondary hogya tertiary hogya even if it's phenylamine which is a benzene ring so show you let's look at all the reactions for example if i have a primary ethylamine so if i have let's say ch3 ch2 nh2 and how would that act as a base it'll accept h plus ions to become CH3, CH2, NH3 plus. If I had CH3 on an NH like that, and another CH2, CH3, how would this accept NH plus? It'll just become CH3, NH here and here. That'll be the data bond happen with H. And also accepts NH plus. Now phenylamines. These are benzene ring with an NH2. They also act as bases. We'll talk about their varying strengths in these three. Their strength of basicity is different, but they all accept H plus ions to become salts because they are proton acceptors and they accept the H plus. So a regular amine, a primary amine, a secondary amine, phenylamine, I don't have space for tertiary, but they all do the same. As long as they have a nitrogen with a lone pair, they are going to be proton acceptors and bases. To understand their basicity or which is more basic than the other, we have to understand why they first form, uh, how do they form this, uh, this characteristic. It comes from the fact that a base has a lone pair and that low base, if that has a lone pair, that lone pair is going to make a dative bond with H plus ions. And that would result in the dative bond right here coming from the lone pair to the H plus and the whole thing becomes a positive ion. Now in this case that is only if the base is neutral. If the base is negative, the negative plus positive becomes neutral. But the idea is any base is going to accept H plus to become this. But every base will accept H plus ions to become, you know, uh, uh, the salt in this case or the conjugate acid. But what determines the basicity, basicity or is the extent of ionization is when this base is added to water. 
So with water, the reaction forms an equilibrium because water is not just H plus. Water is H2O. And what a base does in water is it tries to extract the edge out of water. So I'm trying to actually compare the basicity with water. Because this is easy, there's no water here, but here the water is pulling the H. While this B also wants the H. So there's a competition between B pulling out the H from water. And that's why there's an equilibrium. Because the competition doesn't always succeed. So what happens here is that if the B pulls out an H from here, it becomes HB. Like this. Like this anion. Literally now, if it does the exact same thing, the B's lone pair will want to make a dative bond with one of the H's from water. But if that does that, what's left in water is an OH minus ion. And this, by the way, was what was happening in ammonia. If you remember in O levels, you would write ammonia and you would say it on any, any S level. Ammonia and water ionize, but ionize partially. Sometimes you write it like this to show that's a weak base. Because what we knew that the base would accept an H plus to become, in this case, an H4 plus which is just exactly like this, NH3 plus NH plus becomes NH4 plus and leaving behind water. And the strength of any base is the measure of the extent of the forward reaction of this equilibrium. Let me repeat. The strength of any base is determined by the position of this equilibrium. If this equilibrium lies to the right, too much that means the base was strong enough to pull much uh, H plus out of water but if it lies to the left as an equilibrium that means the base wasn't very successful in pulling out the H plus from the water so the extent of the equilibrium lying to the right tells me how strong the base is now comparing this this idea ammonia to the first uh, we saw uh, ethylamine like the most basic one let's take Let's take ethylamine because the syllabus actually talks about that. So let's take ethylamine. Now we've got to take it out, figure out why there will be a difference in both of their ionizations. Both are going to mix in water. Firstly, first of all, they'll both make hydrogen bonds with water, first of all, before even ionizing because H bonded to an N and a lone pair. H bonded to an N and a lone pair. Or H bonded to O and a lone pair. So there's many ways these guys can make hydrogen bonds. We've seen ammonia make them with water. Just like ammonia made it with water, ethylamine, ethylamine or any amine can make it with water also. Now, so this, this exact same thing happens here. If the base with water, the base extracts the H plus from water, makes the cation and OH ions. Ammonia did the same thing with water, extracted the H from water, become NH4 plus. So this guy being a base does the exact same thing. In this case, it becomes CH3, CH2 and the NH2 becomes NH3 plus. And the water becomes OH minus ion. So our job is to realize that, okay, uh, to, to talk about the extent of ionization of, of ammonia with and ethylamine, which is more, which is going to ionize more. And now understand why they're going to make. Now the, the power the base has to pull the H plus comes from how easily it can share this lone pair with an H. Let me repeat. The power of a base comes from the fact that how easily it can share this lone pair with this H. The more easily it can give the lone pair to the H, the more favorable this formation of the ion would be. Now between these two, the difference is the alkyl group. This nitrogen is getting, is bonded to three hydrogens. This nitrogen is bonded to two hydrogens and an alkyl group. There is a slight variation in their electron clouds. Now, if I draw ammonia and if I draw ethylamine right here, and I'm not, I'm trying to minimize so that we can all see everything. So, here are the structure of both ammonia and amine. Now, again, the power of a base is how easily it can donate the H plus to make this data bond. And between these two, you can probably guess which will result in a greater negative charge around the lone pair. We've all studied the alkyl groups are electron releasing. So what happens is these alkyl groups are going to give electrons to the nitrogen. And if nitrogen can get electron cloud from the alkyl group, it makes it easier to donate this lone pair. And while the water may, the, sorry, an ammonia, all the three are hydrogens. 
in amine, this is an alkyl group. And the alkyl group has a greater propensity to give the electron clouds to nitrogen. So here, this nitrogen ka lone pair is more easier donated to an H plus than ammonia's would be. Because the alkyl group has an electron releasing effect. Therefore, it makes ethyl amine a stronger base than ammonia. Why am I saying it's a stronger base than ammonia? Because of the because of the alkyl group having an electron releasing effect makes the lone pair more easily uh, donated to H plus ions in ethyl amine than it is in ammonia. So the basicity of any base depends on how available the lone pair is for nitrogen to donate it to hydrogen to form a dative bond with a hydrogen ion. In ammonia, the lone pair is less readily available than it is in an ethyl amine. Because in ethyl amine, the alkyl groups have an electron releasing effect or an electron donating effect. And they encourage then the nitrogen to form the dative bond with hydrogen ions. So this and, and the reason obviously is why does it encourage it? Because the alkyl group has an electron releasing effect. It increases the electron density on the nitrogen, making it more negative and therefore more likely to donate this lone pair and attract H plus ions to form the positive ion, the dative bond. Now, this is very well contrasted by the basicity of what phenylamines. Now, what we've discovered is that phenylamines, phenylamines have, are less basic than ethylamines because the lone pair on phenylamines is less readily available for donation. And the reason for that is that the lone pair on phenylamine is less available for donation to form the dative bond. I'm just going to put up an, a phenylamine uh, molecule. Now this is phenylamine, C6H5 bonded to an NH2. Now if you notice here, the lone pair of nitrogen is in a P orbital. And just like in phenols, this lone pair, even though nitrogen is electronegative, this lone pair gets delocalized into the benzene ring. Now if this lone pair is delocalized into the ring, two things happen. The ring becomes more reactive and we'll see that in the next coming reactions, just like phenol. But because phenol did not need for the, H or, or the lone pair to be donated, and so we never cared about that, how easy it was uh, for the lone pair to be giving out from uh, phenols. But we do care about that in phenylamine because, because phenylamine are bases and the whole, the whole property depends on how easily can they donate this lone pair. And is this lone pair, when delocalized into the benzene ring, is now less available for donation. Hence, phenylamine is a weaker base than ammonia is. Now, between these three, this side uh, in phenylamine is giving electrons to the nitrogen, increasing the electron density here, making the lone pair more readily available for donation to make the dative bond with H plus ions versus ammonia. But phenylamine, the lone pair is delocalized into the benzene ring. Therefore, it's less readily available for donation to make H plus, uh, to make dative bonds with H plus ions. So what we see here is that an alkylamine like methyl, uh, ethylamine, any alkylamine is going to be more basic than ammonia, which is more basic than phenylamines. And this is a very common question that's asked again and again. Either compare the basicity of ethylamine with ammonia phenylamine with ammonia or all three together or phenylamine with ethylamine and the idea is that here this is more basic than ammonia because the alkyl groups are electron releasing increase the negative charge on the electron density on the nitrogen the lone pair is more readily available for donation in phenylamine the lone pair is actually delocalized into the benzene ring and is therefore less readily available for donation than even ammonia is so this ethylamine is basicity wise, the, the strength of basis, basis, basic character, ethylamine is most basic amongst the three and phenylamine is least basic among the three. And that's what you got to remember. All right. It's a very popular question coming on my past papers, comparing the basicity of all these three. So that's what you got to write. Now, because the lone pair is being delocalized into the benzene ring for phenylamine, Therefore, phenylamine reactions of the ring are even faster than a normal benzene ring, just like that of phenols. 
So the hair, phenols and phenylamine are behaving the same way. Even though phenols are acids and phenylamines are bases, and they have very different reactions. Like phenols will actually accept alkali to make salt and water, while phenylamine will accept an acid to make salt and water. But their benzene ring reactions are going to be identical. Whatever condition phenylamine, phenol uses to react, so will phenylamine. For example, if we had remembered the bromination of phenol, it you needed a phenol, you needed to add aqueous bromine, you did not need the catalyst. And the reaction was so severe that the BR was attached to all three positions, 2, 4 and 6. In phenylamine, the exact same thing happens. In phenylamine, you've got the, because both cases, the lone pair on the atom bonded to the benzene ring, the lone pairs are delocalized. The ring is more reactive. And so you need less severe conditions and sometimes more substitutions take place. So in phenylamine, just like in phenols, the BR comes in positions 2, 4 and 6. The same will happen with dilute HNO3 or aqueous chlorine. The same reactions. And it's just like in phenol, there was a white PPT. Same here also, there will be a white PPT. So, if you say a compound is added to bromine and gives bromine water and decolorizes, and decolorizes it and gives a white PPT, then you can say either the compound is phenol or phenylamine. Because they both have the exact same result. Alright? So, what we've seen so far is amines are actually organic bases. They are lone pair donors to H plus ions to make dative bonds. Their basicity varies. Ethylamines are stronger bases or any alkylamines are more basic than ammonia because the alkyl groups have an electron releasing effect. Increase the negative charge on the nitrogen atom. The lone pair is more easily donated. Phenylamine the lone pair is delocalized into the benzene ring, less easily available for donation, therefore a weaker base. But because the lone pair is in the ring, the ring becomes more reactive. It is as equally reactive as the ring was found in phenols. So wherever the ring reactions of phenols were, they were with bromine aqueous, chlorine aqueous, and nitric acid aqueous. Same reaction will happen with phenylamine. Obviously with acid, even this part will react. So we don't study, we don't, I mean, you, you know, you, you won't encounter them in the notes because this is a base with an acid, it will actually neutralize the acid. But bromine water and chlorine water are non-acids. So they will react with the ring exactly the same way. That's why the syllabus for phenylamines only says to talk about its reaction with bromine and by extension, therefore, chlorine water. They both make white PPTs. The difference is bromine is orange in color, orange to colorless, the reaction goes. Chlorine is almost colorless anyway, so there's no change. But the reactions of bromine and chlorine are identical for phenol and phenylamine. Identical. Alright? Now, coming up next is, because phenol, uh, amines have lone pairs, that lone pair also makes them nucleophiles. So, we're going to see how these guys start nucleophilic reactions. So, amines as nucleophiles. Now, what are the nucleophiles? Because they are just like ammonia. So if ammonia can act as a nucleophile, because what do nucleophiles have to have? They have to have a lone pair to cause a reaction, to cause the attack. And amines have that lone pair also. So amines behave like nucleophiles and are going to attack any carbon with a positive charge or a partial positive charge. Which is what makes them great when we discussed this reaction in the previous uh, class on acyl chlorides. That acyl chlorides undergo addition elimination reactions because they are attacked by nucleophiles. The carbon being having a plus charge and, uh, and what they do is they get attacked by nucleophiles if you remember. One of those nucleophiles was amines. So we've actually seen this reaction already in acyl chlorides. And the reaction is that acyl chlorides react with amines to make amines. So here I have an acyl chloride and an amine. How do they react? Well, the lone pair attacks this and removes the H, remove the Cl and the H is removed and you end up making an amide. An amide is RCO double bonded to the NH R dash of the amine. And that's the overall reaction. 
and you also give out water molecules. I'm pulling up an example of a reaction like that, right there. So this is an acyl chloride, a COCl, and this is an amine, ethyl amine. And the N attacks the carbon, and the H and the Cl are removed to make HCl. And the remaining molecule, the yellow part, is coming from the acyl chloride, and the blue part coming from the amine. And they end up making this functional group amide, CONH. So you see that CONH. That's a genetic reaction, and that's the an example of the reaction. And this is a good way to make amides. A very popular reaction given in questions, where an acyl chloride reacts with an amine to make an amide. Okay, a very popular reaction. And this is the formation of amides also. And amides are made from acyl chlorides and amides. And we've done this reaction before, I'm just repeating it here. All right, so this is done also. So this is the only reaction of amines as nucleophiles that's in your syllabus. The other is the act action as bases and phenylamines reaction as a base and also as a ring, uh, how the ring is more reactive. There's one more reaction that connects phenols, phenols and phenylamines. And that is coming up where you can start from a phenylamine and you can make a phenol molecule also. And that's a multi-step reaction mechanism, uh, process that we look into. So let me take you there. Now phenylamine can be converted to phenols in this two-step reaction pathway. Where you start from a phenylamine, you convert to what we call a disonium salt. And the disonium salt gets converted to phenol. So we can start from phenylamine and make this. Now obviously we have to do preps of phenylamine also. How do I make this? And we talk about that after this. The preparation of all different amines. Right now we're discussing the reaction of amines. So amines, phenylamine especially, can be converted to a phenol through a an intermediate, which is by the way called a disonium salt. Diazonium salt. We look at that in a step in a step. In a second, in more detail. But understand that in a two-step reaction pathway, I can convert the NH2 on a benzene ring to OH. Phenylamine to phenol. That's important reaction pathway. The first step is basically adding phenylamine, adding dilute HNO2 to phenylamine. Now, this is called nitrous acid. And sometimes you don't get nitrous acid. So sometimes what we do is we take sodium nitrite and dilute HCl and mix them together because the H plus and the nitri nitride ion from the acid and the salt become HNO2. So the reagents for this reaction, because in the exam you have to write that, the reagents are actually going to be, I would suggest take nitrous acid, dilute nitrous acid and dilute HCl. You can also alternatively take NaNO2 and HCl, either way. But HCl has to be present because the this guy doesn't give enough, enough H plus ions. So I have nitrous acid and HCl, or because the, this is the reactant HNO2, and what nitrous acid does is it converts is converts NH2 to this salt N2Cl. The Cl is coming from HCl. Now we'll talk about the structure of this for a second. But this reaction has to be done at less than five degrees, or about less than ten degrees, about five, because if we do it at a higher temperature, this will decompose. Now this step. Is actually going to come up in the next rea uh, in another reaction we're going to see after this called azodize, and we talk about that in a, to form it, to form azodize, and we will talk about that. So that's why I'm going to keep this consistent. The first step is to get if you want to get an azo uh, disonium salt, we need to do this because we'll decompose this anyways. But if you want to isolate into this disonium salt, this is called disonium salt. Uh, so I need to do it at five degrees centigrade. I'll make some space here, scoot over, and bring this guy up. Now this is your dazonium salt, this guy. So the N2 is actually N triple bond N, and the middle nitrogen has a plus charge. Now this N was the one from phenylamine, and this N came from the nitrous acid. But using this reagent, and the mechanism is not in your syllabus, but using this reagent, you can add a second N to this, and hence this is called a dazonium salt disonium salt. This is N2 with a plus charge, which is what you will see here. And the Cl then bonds to this as a minus ion. So the first step this is involving is 
the phenanamine gets converted to a diazonium salt by using dilute HNO2 at 5 degrees. And the second step then becomes this, where the diazonium salt, this fellow right here, is decomposed by adding to water and heating to over 60 degrees centigrade, and then this decomposes to give me phenol. And so in this two-part reaction, I can start from phenylamine, get a diazonium salt, and the diazonium salt becomes phenols. That's a very popular reaction. All right, to go from phenylamine, and I'll write again, phenylamine to a diazonium salt, which then gives me phenol. All right. Now, why is this reaction important? Because you can start from phenylamine and get phenol. You can start from a benzene ring and get phenylamine and get phenol in a five step. And that's organic synthesis reactions and they've given a few of those in the past papers. Just to give an overview of what, that, what I mean was that what they can do is they can start off with a benzene ring. Starting from a benzene ring, you can actually make this whole reaction pathway. Meaning I'm gonna start off this with you can start off with uh, benzene and make nitrobenzene and then make phenylamine and then make this diazonium salt. From that make this phenol and from that make the ester. And except for one reaction that we'll just see in a few minutes, all of the reactions you've done, like reaction number one was done in, this is number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. Reaction number one is done in benzene. You need conk H2SO4 and conk HN3 at 55 degrees centigrade this comes onto the benzene as electrophilic substitution then this is actually a reduction of nitrobenzene to phenylamine we will do this then phenylamine to diazonium salt uh, we just did this right now you need uh, dilute HNO2 plus HCl at 5 degrees centigrade only 5 makes this diazonium salt then you add that to water and you heat and you get phenol and phenol to go to a phenyl benzoate ester, you need to add this as an acyl chloride. Literally, this guy with benzene ring, COCl, and the phenol has to be dissolved in NaOH to get this ester. So this reaction pathway is pretty popular and comes in a few questions. And you can start off from one guy and make a very large molecule from benzene. So this is a good example of the reaction we just saw to start from phenylamine to phenol with diazonium salt in the middle, the N2 plus Cl minus. So please learn this. After this, we'll convert this into a dye, a dye meaning a colored compound. So that's coming up next. So the reaction that we're gonna look at is called a coupling reaction. What is coupling is, is that you're coupling the diazonium salt with a phenol. So the diazonium salt, this fellow, becomes this compound. Now you'll realize that this has one ring and N triple bond N. And this fellow has a ring, N double bond N, and another ring and an OH. So phenol and other derivatives of phenol can react with this to make this compound. So let me scroll down to show you the same molecules I've drawn here, here but in different colors. The idea being that the diazonium salt is in green and the phenol derivative is in pink. So you see the green part of the molecule stays as is except for the fact that a triple bond becomes this double bond and the nitrogen on the right makes another single bond with the ring of phenol. Now the phenol part is what's coupling with the diazonium salt to make an, what we call an azo dye. So this is a diazonium, diazonium salt. This is the salt we made earlier from phenylamine. And with a particular phenol or a deriv derivative of phenol, meaning that uh, different things adding onto the benzene ring, it'll make a different colored compound in every different time. So this is the type class of compounds is azo dyes. This, this is an azo dye. Why is it called a dye? Because this is a colored compound. And the color is really due to the benzene ring overlapping with the nitrogen, nitrogen pi bond, which is overlapping with the next benzene ring. That part isn't in your syllabus. Making a dye is, and a good way to identify the dye is that it will have a nitrogen-nitrogen double bond and a single bond on either side with benzene rings. And one of the benzene rings will have an OH attached to it. You could have had multiple benzene rings also. And we look at many examples, by the way. But let's see how this is done first. Now, to add the phenol, you don't, can't just add the phenol. You have to dissolve the phenol in phenoxide because that's how we uh, have the phenol dissolved in NaOH. Why? Because phenol dissolved in NaOH makes a phenoxide ion, which is a stronger nucleophile. And we want that attacking the diazonium salt. Much faster reaction that way. 
So before the phenol in NaOH, it becomes an anion. And then that anion is then added to the disonium salt. So the disonium salt plus the phenoxide anion are added together. And the result in this compound. So this part, the green part, stays as is. The nitrogen triple bond breaks one of the pi bonds, makes a sigma bond with the benzene ring of the phenoxide ion. In the end, you acidify it again to put the OH, the H back. But the final product is this. And this is made, and they can ask you in the exam is, this is made by adding the disonium salt to phenol dissolved in any OH. And this is the most basic of the disonium salts you can have. There are many more examples that we can talk about. Uh, different variations of this will result in different compounds. Okay, now imagine that you have this uh, example where you got the disonium salt and a methyl phenol, phenol in an OH. So they'll also have a coupling reaction. And so at the four position of the OH, you'll have the reaction. It doesn't have to be four, it could be two also, but let's do it at four. So the, this guy can attack on the position number two or four, either or you want. And so when you do that, the product that you get is, is something like this. So here I attach this on position number four. The methyl group stays. And this is the a, a new, a different hazard dye. And this actually has a different color than the previous example because that was just phenol. And this one is phenol, a methyl phenol. And then we can look at some more reactions too. Let's scroll over. So let's look at this one. Okay, so in this particular case, we got another disonium salt, but now you have phenol on positions two and four, six, you have methyl and ethyl. So now these two will bond and you'll get a different dye. And that would look like something like this. You get a different dye. All right, these two attached to it. Now, so you can work this word. And, and generally what they do is they sometimes give you the azo dye and ask you to work backward of what salt made that azo dye. What ozonium salt and what phenol made the azo dye. So let's scroll down to see that. Okay, so look at this molecule. I've made a pretty large molecule here. But this molecule has the N double bond N and an OH on a benzene ring. So what initial reactants could have made this? Well, clearly the azo dye would be this part of the molecule. And the remainder would be the phenol derivative. Now, obviously this is not phenol because it's got an OH on two benzene rings. But since the phenol reacts this way, therefore this would also react this way. So you would actually need this particular compound reacting with a disonium salt to make this um, azo dye. So if you're writing this in exam, so you would actually say the phenol needed here was the one benzene ring, the two benzene ring with the OH. And I've ignored my benzene rings, guys. I always draw them very beautifully, but that's what it is. All right. So this is the formation of azo dyes from uh, phenyl amine and from phenols malake. Next up is the last thing left is how to make alkenes, how to make amines. Amines can be made from four different ways. And let's talk about all four different ways. Okay. The first is when you react with a halogenoalkane with ammonia. Now, if you react a halogenoalkane with ammonia, the NH3 replaces the Br with NH2 itself. So you get... Uh, this is the reaction we saw in AS level and this was nucleophilic substitution on a halogenoalkane. So if you were to start off with let's say CH3, CH2, Br, you could have actually converted to CH3, CH2, NH2 by using what? Either uh, ammonia in ethanol or just ammonia conch or ammonia gas. So ammonia in ethanol or conch ammonia and heat under reflux. And this was done in halogenoalkane reactions. In AS level, this was nucleophilic substitution. All right. Then, the second is how do I also... In, there's another way to get from halogenoalkane to an amine. But in this, in this case, there's an extra carbon attached to it. And you can imagine, because the main reaction actually is with cyanides. So you can actually convert a cyanide into a nitrile. Or CH2 NH2. That's the major reaction. It is a reduction of CN to CH2 NH2. So the four ways to prepare alkenes. So preparing amines. Sorry, not alkenes. Preparing amines. 
Now, the four ways, I'm going to give you the overall summary first and then the individual ways. There are four different ways. The first one is take a halogenoalkane and replace the Br with NH2. This was, by the way, done in AS. The second reaction is taking a cyanide, RCN, nitrile, sorry, and replacing the CN with NH2. But that's what happens the C also, you don't replace the CN with NH2, the C becomes reduced to CH2 and the N becomes NH2. So that's a reduction reaction. The third reaction is in fact also reduction and this one is reduction of amines, amides, sorry. So we reduce the CO and it becomes CH2. Instead of the O, now you have two H's and then you got the NH2. So these are three reactions to make uh, straight chain amines and to make phenylamine, this is a different reaction. Phenylamines are made from nitrobenzene. So that means the fourth one to make phenylamines, you make it from nitrobenzene. So this is benzene, nitrobenzene is becoming a phenylamine. And that's also reduction. So these three are reduction reactions and this one is nucleophilic substitution. So let's see all four of them. In fact, the CN was also from halalkane. So you can actually go from one to this guy to this guy also. So a, this is actually a very good important reaction pathway. So you got to learn all of these four. Let's look at them all together one by one. Now, the first one was to convert a halogenoalkane to an amine. So the BR is replaced by an NH2. For example, you have CH3, CH2, Br. You can replace the CH3, CH2, ka Br ki jaga. You can put an NH2. And obviously, the and this is done through using ammonia. Now, ammonia can be in conch or dissolved in ethanol. And the conditions will have to be heat under reflux. And you know this because you've done heat under reflux. This reaction mechanism in halogenoalkanes, NAS. The reaction type is nucleophilic substitution all right okay the second one is to cn to nitrile so nitrile to uh, amines but do remember the nitriles were made from halogenoalkane so you can actually have the halogenoalkane add a nitrile and then become an amine now in this case aapka carbon ek atom se one carbon atom se bhar jayega so what you actually have is, imagine that you have a CH3, CH2, Br, the guy that we took earlier. You can replace the Br with CN and that's an AS level reaction. And for that you need NaCN in ethanol. That's the first step. And heat under reflux. Okay. So in this case what's happening is the Br is being replaced by a CN. Nucleophilic substitution. And then... We're going to uh, reduce the CN by adding an H here and an H here. Actually, two H's, one on, uh, two on each of the two atoms. So the CH2, CH3, CH2 stay as is. The CN becomes CH2 and the N becomes NH2. And if you notice from the original molecule, there's an extra carbon atom and an amine group. So the first step involved this. First you did was add an ACN. To BR, this step was the nucleophilic substitution reaction done in halogenoalkanes. And this step, this one, is reduction. And for this, you need lithium aluminum hydride in ether. You might remember that as a good reducing agent in AS. We need it again. Heat under reflux. And we do that, the CN gets, uh, gets reduced to CH2 and H2. All. So remember, this reaction is any cyanide, a nitrile will become CH2 and H2. Okay? Now, these are quite used often in reaction pathways. So you can actually start from an AS alkane to a haloalkane to a nitrile to, uh, and then to an amine. And the amine can then be used to make an uh, uh, amide also. So, the, so organic synthesis, may, these are very good reactions to use because they can start from one and go towards another. Then there is the third. This is the second. So the first was through haloalkanes replacing the NH, uh, Br with NH2. The second was haloalkanes with CN and then reducing it. So this compound has one more carbon atom than the previous case. The third one is reducing an amide. 
Now, what's an amide? That's the next functional group we're going to be anyway studying in detail. But the amide is this functional group, RCONH2. And what you do is you reduce this guy, RCONH2. Because you have reduced karenge, so the C becomes CH2 instead of the O. And the NH2 remains as is. And this is the reduction of nitriles, of amides to form amines. Is bhi you use LiAlH4 in dry ether. And the conditions are heat under reflux. Heat under reflux. Okay? Or simply just heat. And so the CN is replaced. CN is also reduced by LiAlH4. And amides are also reduced by the same compound. All right. So, so that's what's common between these two. Let me say this again. Uh, the reaction number two we saw with the CN became CH two NH two, and right now we just saw RCO NH two can also be reduced to form RCH two NH two. These both can be done by using lithium aluminum hydride. Let me just fix that too. It looks a little ugly. Okay. So. That was the third reaction, reduction of an amide to form, again, the CO ke jaga NH2 a kya. In place of this O, you got two H's. In place of this O, you got two H's. And the last one was reduction of nitrobenzene. So nitrobenzene like this is converted to phenylamine like that using tin and HCl. Tin and concentrated HCl, tin being the, non, uh, the transition element SN with concentrated HCl will give you and you heat them up and that's another reduction reaction so three different uh, this one will make you a phenylamine this is the only way to make a phenylamine all right so that's four different ways of making an amine all right let's just look at some examples of these reactions so let's look at this example in this example what are the two reagents we need to convert this compound into this. Now the first step of this might seem like it's a benzene ring, but it's actually a halogen alkane Cl2 on a Cl on a CH2, and that's, that's being changed to a CH2 Cn. So the change here is between converting a Cl into a Cn. So in step number one, you would need NaCn dissolved in ethanol. And you'd need what? Heat under reflux as your condition. Now and in step number two, what you have is you have the CN becoming CH2 NH2, and that's reduction of CN. So that would you will need LiAlH4 in ether and heat under reflux. That's the second step here. All right, that's one example. Let's scroll down to another one. Okay, so here it's saying suggest the products X, Y, and Z. So let's see what X can be made from. It's an acid with the SOCl2. So acid with SOCl2 will make you replace the OH with Cl. So X would have to be CH3, CH2, CO, Cl. This is X. Then Y would be, this is X, and I'll just, yeah, I'll just put this as X. Then Y, what would Y be? For Y, you're adding ammonia to this guy. Now, that would be an additional elimination reaction. Ammonia will come here and replace the Cl with NH2. So the original CH3, CH2, CO stay, but instead of the Cl, now you get NH2. So now acyl chloride has become an amide. This is an amide. And then when I add LiAh4, then I would reduce the amide. And the reduction of the amide results in Z, which in this case would be the CH3, CH2 stay as is. But the CO, ka jo o hai, that becomes CH2, and you got the NH2. And if you want to write this down, this would be CH3, CH2, then the new CH2, and then NH2. So that would be going from a propanoic acid to propanamine. An acid is in a base, panalia, using all of the steps. A good reaction pathway. Another example, similar to this one, another example would be Okay, now when this you gotta find out A and B, but A me kya hai? PCl5 hai carbo is pe, benzoic acid pe. So what would A be? A would be the benzene ring, but instead of the COCl, so COOH, 
it becomes CO Cl that's A and then to this this is A then you add CH3 CH2 and H2 to this guy you replace the Cl with the rest of the A mine so the same fellow you make but now the, you replace the Cl with CH2 no sorry not CH2 NH then CH2 CH3 and the H of MO, A mine and the OH of sorry the uh, Cl of ACL chloride makes HCl as a byproduct but this is made an amide again all right i'll give you a couple of more examples so how can i make for example this compound from this compound and i look at this it's ch3 twice on a ch so ch3 twice on a ch like this and then a ch2 and an nh2 this will be actually an amine and the main difference is if I actually look at the atoms, CH3, CH stays there, CH3, CH stays there. Br, banana, Br, kijaga, ye pura lana hai. And you notice Br, kijaga, ye pura lana hai, that means that I'm adding an extra C. So, first to add an extra C, I've got to convert this into what? A CN. So, CH, to banjaga, CN. That's the extra C that's coming in. And then the extra C and the N gets to be reduced to CH2 and H2 and so for that the second molecule there you go you would actually have to just convert the C to a CH2 and the N to an NH2 the first step is done by NaCN ethanol heat under reflux the second step reduction is done by LiAH4 in ether heat under reflux and you can go from uh, haloalkane to an extra carbon amine all right that wraps up the video for amines, it's a it's a very important chapter. It's tested quite often in the past papers. So I really want you guys to go through this very thoroughly, try a lot of questions out, and we'll be going through some more questions later. Anyways, ciao.